Great. So today's session is migrating ClickView 11 to 12 and beyond. And today's presenter is Phil Bishop, President of InfoZone Intelligence, and my name is Shima Odin. Today, uh, I'm the today's host. So that said, I will pass you the ball, Phil. And if you can share your screen, that would be great. There you go, we see it. Go ahead, Phil. Great, thanks, Shima. Uh, hello, everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about, as Shima said, uh, migrating from ClickView version 11 to version 12 uh, and beyond. The beyond part is uh, we're going to throw a little bit about end printing and some uh, thoughts about ClickSense in here as well. So I just want to start out by saying I've been through about five of these migrations from 11 to 12 over the past year. Um, this is certainly the easiest ClickView version migration that I've ever uh, experienced. Um, at least in terms of issues encountered and, and bugs to resolve. A big part of that, of course, is that, that since ClickView is such a mature product, uh, there's just not a lot of new features that Click are, are adding to this, especially on the, the UI uh, side of the, of the product. Uh, so therefore, there's not a lot of new code to break in. Most of the features and changes are on the back end and the operational path, as we'll see. Um, and we've gone through enough uh, service releases now uh, with 12 that uh, it is, it's, it's quite stable. So your focus can really be on the planning and execution of the actual migration itself um, instead of worrying so much about uh, what, how is your environment going to react to a lot, of, a lot of changes. So again, uh, as Shima said, my name is Phil Bishop. I'm president of InfoZone Intelligence here in the U.S. Um, my first ClickView version was, uh, what well, release was 1.04. So I've been through um, a lot of version releases with ClickView. And like I said, I mean, I, I think this one in particular is, uh, is, is pretty easy compared to, uh, to all the others. For those of you who've been around for the version 9 to 10 or 10 to 11, that was a little bit more to take on. But um, the good news is that this one is a little bit more straightforward. So I'm going to try to cover three areas today during this webinar. Uh, the first being just to kind of review what, is the, what are the current supported uh, versions and releases of ClickView 11, ClickView 12. Uh, we'll talk a little bit in here about end printing and how that stands. The second part, we'll talk a little bit about some uh, version 12 features, enhancements, and changes. Just so you know that whether you want to go there or not, uh, you know, you'll know what you're, what you're getting and what you can expect uh, once you get there. And then finally, we'll cover uh, some uh, different paths uh, that you can take uh, from a migration planning uh, and execution standpoint um, and some of the options that, that you have there as well. And then just for good measure, we'll, we'll throw in some, some thoughts about sense and then we'll open it up at the, at the end for uh, some questions and answers. Uh, hopefully I can uh, answer anything you have on your mind there. So from a current support standpoint, uh, the current release of uh, 11.2.0, uh, which is the current uh, version uh, 11 for ClickView, is SR17, which was released just a couple days ago. Uh, it is a, a bug fix only, which, of course, uh, th those of you who are uh, Looking at these SRs that you're seeing, most of these SRs are strictly bug fixes only at this point. Um, ClickView 11.2.0 end of life has been announced uh, as December of this year. Um, so you, I would encourage you to think about uh, this migration happening at some point during uh, 2017. Now, it was announced at Connections that uh, this support will be extended for one year on ClickView 11. However, uh, there are conditions as well as extra maintenance costs uh, to, to continue that support. So for all intents and purposes, um, I'm thinking nobody really wants to pay more in maintenance. So for, I'm considering ClickView 11 end of life, uh, which, which again, doesn't mean it's going to stop working. It just means uh, if you have a problem, you can't call. 
uh, click support or they'll, they'll make you go to 12 before they resolve your issue. Um, but it's, it's going to end this year. For uh, the current version of 12 is 12.10. Uh, SR6 was released in mid-May. Um, and again, that was, a, that was a bug fix only. And 12.2 uh, is scheduled according to the, the quick roadmap for the second half of this year. Uh, my estimate at this point uh, would probably be sometime around Q4, maybe October um, for uh, Click View 12.2. Uh, since 12.1 was released last December, um, it looks like it's about a yearly cadence for, uh, for the point releases for version 12. And printing. Uh, so for those of you who are holding out and still using version 16, the good news is that uh, uh, there is support uh, for 16 in both 11 and 12. So this doesn't have to be a reason for, for migrating. Um, both versions will support this, and you need to be on uh, uh, N-Printing uh, 16 SR6, which, which was released in mid-April, will support uh, 112016 and 1210 SR4. Um, the, the good news is that uh, end of life for N-Printing, at least, has been extended to December 18. It was originally scheduled for February of 18. They have now moved that to December of 18. Um, as far as I know, at least, uh, there is no cost for that. So, um, so you can continue to use 16 uh, all the way through 2018. If you are interested in going to, or if you're already at, and uh, printing 17, um, that latest release is 17.3.1, SR1. It was released uh, beginning of April. Again, uh, bug fixes only. Um, for those of you who are uh, interested in, in a long and winding story, uh, to get to 17.3.1, you, you have to start from 17.3. To get to 17.3, you have to start from 17.2. So if you're, if you're on an older release of end printing 17, you have to do 2 and then 17.3, and then you can go to 17.3.1. So uh, a bit of a windy road to get there, but... Um, but there is a path. Uh, if you're looking for end printing 17 and interested in click view on demand, uh, you need to be at 17.2 for this. Of course, 16 has always supported on demand, so you can simply stay there. But if you are if you are using 17, whether you're using it for some features that you want in 17 or for sense support. Um, for click view, uh, you need to be at 17.2. Uh, there, I have not heard anything about support for sense uh, on demand uh, in 17 yet. I'm, I believe it's supposed to come, but you know, it's, it's up to click whether they want to provide that or not. And I did find this in the click statement of direction for this year. Uh, of course, they're going to continue to enhance end printing throughout the year. Uh, with additional features, et cetera. Support for extension objects, I think, will be uh, a great thing to have uh, in end printing. We've run that into that issue a couple times with some of our customers. But what's interesting is I don't see anything in here uh, about on demand in this statement of direction, so uh, in, in sense. So very interesting. Uh, um, does a lot by what they don't say here. Okay. So as far as ClickView 12 is concerned, what are the, the main features, enhancements, and uh, as well as what changes can you expect uh, when you go from uh, a version 11 environment to a version 12 environment? So I'd say the, you know, certainly the, the, the biggest feature and that you'll hear everyone talking about uh, from a version 12 standpoint is a common kicks engine. Of course, common here means uh, common between Click View version 12 and Click Sense. Um, this is this the Kicks engine is the the the, uh, the back engine for how Click View works as far as the associative logic and uh, making selections and processing. Um, the the major difference here, of course, is columnar versus row based storage. If you're interested in more on this, uh, you can look up one of my past webinars where I uh, gave a fairly detailed explanation of uh, what this means and how it works. But really, 
from a from a user standpoint and even from a developer standpoint, you there is it's pretty transparent. You really don't notice any difference. The only thing I can say that I have seen just anecdotally, I haven't done scientific studies on this, but it does seem to be a bit faster, especially with certain types of of large data sets. So I think that's that's a good thing. And of course, just having that common engine with Sense, since Sense is going to be enhanced going forward, it's it, it's good that uh, these two are now married again. Um, the second uh, really focus on ClickView 12 is uh, security improvements. And here this means both enhanced uh, application of security features as well as turning off and closing some holes that have been in ClickView for quite a while. So some of these things mean like uh, turning off the, uh, by default at least, the ability to execute external commands uh, from the load script. Um, and as you can see, we have, uh, there's a header injection protection that you can configure now. Um, so there, there's definitely a focus on, you know, trying to avoid any potential problems uh, from a security standpoint uh, inside ClickView. There also seems to be quite a focus on the uh, QBS and QDS, in other words, the ClickView server and ClickView publisher uh, services uh, from a clustering standpoint. So, um, so basically, uh, they're they're looking to uh, enhance the ability to handle more nodes and more users uh, from both server uh, as well as uh, as well as publisher. The mobile touch improvements here, I think, um, again, this is probably one of the most noticeable changes. Um, and appreciated changes uh, from my perspective is that you can now, um, for instance, on an iPad, uh, hold your finger down on an object and get a right-click menu. So that helps you from, you know, export to Excel, in a list box, select excluded, things like that, which you can never do on, on an iPad before with ClickView. Uh, so that is, um, that is certainly a welcome change. Um, by the way, you can also, you know, create and edit uh, objects if you're interested on an iPad. I don't have a whole lot of customers that are interested in doing that, but that is open now um, from, a, from a mobile standpoint to, uh, to add shared objects. The documentation uh, switched from being a file-based documentation to an online help. Um, I kind of like this, especially, you know, if, for those of you who have suffered through the, when you close the click view help and you have to wait for two minutes for, uh, for something to happen, I have no idea what, but before you get control back. The online help, of course, is much faster, it's much crisper, um, and I think it's, it's a better platform going forward so that they can keep, it, keep that help updated. And I have to say, it's, it's a pretty good help uh, system. Um, so that's, that's a really kind of a welcome change with, uh, with 12. For anyone using web parts, um, uh, I don't know a lot of people doing this, uh, but uh, that is at end of life. And then um, ClickView 12 is 64-bit only for the program, uh, so there is no ClickView 32-bit any longer, um, but there is still a 32-bit plug-in as well as uh, uh, for connection for ODBC and OLEDB. For 12.10, which again came out in December, uh, more improvements were done for uh, ClickView server clustering and scaling. Um, they also added the ability to have uh, an unbalanced QBS cluster, which here means uh, machines that are of different uh, configurations uh, can be used in the, in the same cluster. Um, performance and scalability and access point. And again, a lot of this is, you know, this is Click's word. Um, I, I haven't personally seen, uh, you know, enhancements to speed and access point, but this is what they're, this is what they're saying as part of 12. Uh, a publisher load balancer is added. What's interesting here is as part of this, it includes something called QDS groups. And QDS, again, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a quickly distribution service or otherwise known as, as publisher. Um, what this allows you to do is to uh, separate uh, a, a specific set of tasks 
into a separate group so they can be kind of separated out from your from your other tasks. So um, from an enterprise standpoint, you might be interested in, um, you know, uh, having separate QDS groups uh, that are kind of live on their own and you can you can configure them to uh, to execute in, in certain places. So that, that could be valuable for, for larger organizations, I could see. And then again, high load support. So if, if there's a lot of activity going on with your publisher, uh, Click is really working to, um, to make that uh, handle these higher loads better. Um, but again, this is, so these are all, as you can see, just kind of, you know, back end uh, feature enhancements, not really a lot of UI stuff. QDS shutdown improvement means that if, if the service stops for any reason, it'll, uh, the, or you, you, sh you shut down the service, uh, it will continue to gracefully run the tasks uh, that happen to be running at that time uh, and try to complete those uh, before it completely shuts down. So it's just a little bit graceful, more graceful way to handle um, publisher and, uh, and how it handles its tasks. And then single sign-in support for SAP HANA uh, is also was added in, uh, in 12.10. So those are really going through the feature list, but what can you expect from a, from a change perspective? Um, so first of all, I think I've already mentioned this, but uh, your, the uh, allow execute command, uh, which basically is on your script editor, um, that was by default on, in, uh, in version 11, and it's now off in version 12. So if you do have execute commands, typically people use this for Windows file maintenance, like moving files, deleting files, copying files, things like that from the click through script. Uh, this is now by default off. So you have to do, you have to turn it on, and then you'll get all kinds of nasty messages uh, when you try to execute that script saying, are you sure? The, uh, this was originally announced as a named Cal quarantine period uh, change from 24 hours to seven days, but it also does affect document Cal uh, quarantine. So if you're in the habit of trying to efficiently manage your license allocations, uh, this could affect you um, since you're going to have to wait seven days uh, to get that license back once you delete it or get that Cal back. Um, there are a couple things in ClickView that have always kind of been there uh, that are, are a bit annoying, especially to new users of ClickView, because they're, in essence, they're errors, but they're never uh, noted as an error. So in other words, um, in this particular case, one of, the, one of the holes that they've cleaned up here is if you call a mapping table from an apply map function, and that mapping table has not been defined yet in your script, uh, in 11, you'll just, it'll just go right through and just give you a null result on that. Um, in 12, what will happen now is that you'll actually get an error during load script, which I think is a great thing. I mean, you should know that that's happening and not wait to see bad data or have your users complain that they're not seeing something properly um, before you realize that error. Uh, there is a similar thing happening. Uh, I've seen this now in Sense where they're going to close a hole with exists function where if that field is not defined yet, you'll get an error in the load script as well. So, so I like to see that, you know, some of these holes are being um, kind of uh, closed up by, by click. Document chaining, um, you, you now need to have a full path specified um, unless the document is in the same folder. Uh, so just keep that in mind if, if you're doing document chaining. I know. Uh, there was a, an SR for version 12 that had a bit of a problem with document chaining as well. So if you're, if you're running into issues with that or if you have document chaining, make sure, first of all, you go to the latest SR and that, you know, you do follow and read the release notes to make sure that you're in compliance with, uh, with the new way you have to specify document chaining. Um, very important to note that the QVPR, which, uh, which is the publisher database, um, it really is, is more than just publisher. It stores a lot of the QMC settings. Uh, this is not backward compatible from 12 to 11. So this is why it's important to make sure you back up your uh, QVPR database in version 11 prior to migrating to version 12, just to have that possibility 
to go back if, if for any reason you, you decide to do that. Um, so keep that in mind uh, during the process. And then if you are using end printing, uh, the add-on for on-demand printing, uh, you, you'll have to reinstall the add-on when upgrading from 11 to 12. It, it doesn't change, you just have to, to reinstall it to, uh, to make, all, make sure all the settings are proper in, uh, in version 12. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a lot of the changes that you'll see. Let's talk now about the actual uh, migration itself, planning this and executing it. So of course, you know, like anything, uh, planning is critical. Uh, make sure you have a good plan. Um, you know, when, when, are, when are things gonna happen? What's gonna happen when? Who's responsible? Make sure you get that downtime scheduled for your production environments, um, you know, well ahead in advance so that everybody is aware because it will require, you know, at least a couple hours of downtime uh, for production. So um, make sure that uh, you document your current system, uh, if, if not if it's not documented already, and this this could be as simple as just taking some screenshots of your QMC, but you're always gonna you're always gonna want to go back and say, geez, what did I have that set at in 11? Make sure it didn't change in 12 somehow. Um, so I, I recommend highly recommend documenting your your 11 system, and then once you do uh, get to 12, document that system as well. Um, and of course, backup backup means you know at least the QVPR folder and the the INI file. Um, generally, if if you want to back up the whole program data folder for click, um, that would be great. I mean, backing up the whole disk would be good. You you do want to have a backup of your access points so that you make sure you have your your shared files backed up. So uh, you know, in general, back up anything you can. It, it, you know, disk space is cheap, so so use it. If you're using digital certificates, you'll have to uh, reinitiate those. Uh, and in this case, digital certificates refer to the inner service communication in the QM uh, be, between QMC and QDS, for instance, and things like that. It's, it, this doesn't mean SSL certificates. This is the click certificates. And then um, allow, your allow yourself time to test in a development environment. Uh, you want to be able to open. You, you want to. You want to open the apps again. I haven't. I have not experienced a whole lot of problems here, but you never know. Everybody has unique and custom situations. Uh, and you just want to make sure that you find errors before your users do um, in production. And then finally, your move to production. But as far as the types of migration, there's, there's really two, um, but then the added complexity is if you have multi-nodes, um, you want to make sure that all those nodes are upgraded uh, at the same time. You, you don't really want to mix uh, versions and releases within the same uh, cluster node, so you want to upgrade all those. But regardless of whether you have one or ten uh, servers here, uh, you can either upgrade in place or upgrade to new servers. So let's talk about upgrade in place first. This, this of course, is easier, but it's, it's a little bit more dangerous because your, your back path is a little bit more complicated, right? So again, uh, make sure you have your backup before you start this process um, because you never know uh, when you're going to possibly need to go backwards. Um, you want to stop all the services, of course. Uh, and then upgrade the services on each machine. And, and again, upgrade simply means, you know, download the install file and execute it, and it will take care of uh, what it needs to take care of. Now, you may need to upgrade your .NET, depending on how old your current system is. Uh, the minimum requirement for .NET framework for version 12 is 4.5.2, um, as well as, you know, for those of you with very old systems, uh, minimum requirement for OS is uh, Windows Server 2008 or higher, uh, so you may want to look at that. And that may force you to go to uh, a new machine just to make it cleaner, but just be aware of those uh, system requirements before you start the process. Uh, and then start all services on all machines. I would highly recommend uh, once you go through this process to reboot the machine uh, as a cleaner way to, uh, to bring up all those services. You can bring them up manually, but I think a reboot is, is generally the best way to go. Uh, and then test your, obviously, your QMC, your, your publisher, your access point. Um, test your plugin. I would 
you know, you find a few uh, willing subjects in your user community for the for the plugin, but you do want to again, just like always, make sure your plugin version matches your server version here, or else you're asking for for trouble. Um, if you have to make a decision, I would generally upgrade the plugin first uh, before upgrading server, but hopefully you can do it fairly simultaneously. And then just go through your apps and just make sure that they look good. Um, uh, as far as bringing up charts and things like that, I, again, it, it, it's it's been pretty clean, so I wouldn't worry too much about that respect. But okay, for, for certificates, again, I would recommend reading the help and the release notes. But there is a process for uh, when you upgrade to to reinitialize and restandardize your your certificates. Um, so it's, it's fairly simple, but uh, you do want to make sure you follow these steps. When you're upgrading to a new server, obviously you want to uh, you need to install a new uh, version of, of Click uh, along with you know the .NET and, and the right operating system. You may require a different a temporary license from Click here because you do not want to use the same license. Otherwise, Click will think it's, it's another node in the cluster if it if it senses the same license number. So you want to be careful about that. Um, you want to stop uh, the services on the machines, of course. And then uh, rename on the new machine the QVPR folder. Uh, generally, it says remove, but I would generally want to rename this to I don't know QVPR new or something like that. Um, and then the same thing with the QVPR machine name uh, INI file. Uh, you're going to want to rename that because basically what what you're then going to do is copy your QVPR folder from version 11 over into uh, version 12. Uh, and then um, as is, so you're going to kind of overlay those names. When you do that, uh, when the Click V12 uh, services start, they will uh, automatically migrate that QVPR into version 12 structure and format for you, so you don't have to do any ex extra steps for that. But again, that just makes sure you, you can't go backwards. So um, if you are able to keep the same source and access point folder structures, um, that generally makes your life a lot easier. So if you can, I would recommend uh, doing that. Um, of course, all servers have to have the same regional settings, meaning you know, generally if, if you're in the states, keep, keep everything to, for the states. If you start mixing regional settings, that can cause issues. Um, you want to rename the INI file that you copied over to the to the new machine name so that it, it senses it when you start up the service. And then um, generally power tools, uh, I haven't seen a power tools version for that for version 12, but I can tell you that from personal experience that XML DB viewer does work um, in version 12. In other words, the version 11 um, compile for that uh, XML DB viewer does work in version 12. And it's a great way to go through all of your QVPR XML files and update the old name to the new name. So basically in your QVPR, it's going to say the old machine name. Uh, you want to update to the, new, to the new machine name. It'll allow you to go through and say, you know, do you want to change this one? Maybe not. Do you want to change this one? Yes, I do. So it's, it's a nice way to actually perform this, uh, this migration. And it, it's pretty quick and simple. It's really not that complicated to do. Finally, start the services on a new, new machine. Hopefully everything uh, comes up for you. Um, if you need to, you can uh, in QMC then change your source folder paths uh, for publisher and, and access point. Um, so just make sure that they match uh, what they used to say because, you, again, you're bringing your old QVPR over. You want to make sure you copy, you bring a copy of your shared and meta files over from uh, your old access point because th these are going to contain your uh, shared objects, your bookmarks, uh, anything that the, your users are creating on their own. Um, they're going to expect to see them on your new system. So you want to make sure that you, have, you do a copy of that. And then when you actually do the production migration, make sure you do that immediately. Um, after you shut down the current production machine and move to the new production machine so that you have an up-to-date version of those. Uh, shut down the old machine or at least make sure that the services are set to manual um, so that they don't automatically start in case of a reboot of that server. 
and then um, set your CAL allocation parameters. Unfortunately, I, I've not found an easy way to set up CALs, especially if you have a large number of CALs, and even and document CALs are the worst. Um, so you're going to have to go through some time to, uh, to set all the, uh, if you want to do manual uh, allocation of CALs, that's great. If you want to open up uh, dynamic allocation of CALs for a, a certain period to get everybody in there, and then do some manual. Um, but just make sure you think about how that's going to work and plan that out before you get to this point. Now it's too late. Start all the services, uh, and again, I would suggest you know rebooting that server um, so that you have uh, a clean system coming up, um, and uh, should come up pretty good. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically the, the both migration procedures. Uh, just a, a couple quick notes about ClickSense. Um, so you know, a lot of what you hear about ClickSense is that. You know, every you don't have to worry about the the data model, the script. Everything is the same between view and sense, and that's generally true. But there are cases where things that you counted on in click view are no longer true in sense. So, for instance, and that's per, that talks to the legacy versus standard mode. You can go back to legacy mode in click sense, but I would recommend trying as hard as you can to stay with standard mode, especially as we go forward with, with new features and functionality in sense. But you're going to run into problems if you currently rely on things like binary load. Um, there's a bit of a different way to do it in sense. Um, info and bundle loads have been uh, removed in sense, so you can no longer do those. The execute command is no longer even available in sense, even from a setting standpoint. And then path names, of course, are changed over to what are called libs uh, or libraries in ClickSense. Um, the good news is you can still do relative uh, pathing off of those libs, but just be aware that uh, that's going to have to change for you. Um, if you're currently using loop and reduce in ClickView, uh, that's not going to be available in your Sense QMC, so just be aware of that. You're going to have to come up with some other technique for doing that, including dynamic data reduction which does work in Sense. And uh, the, this new ClickView Converter, which came out in Sense 3.2, um, I've actually used this. It, it, it's not a bad thing, actually. I, I, and I think what we're seeing here is Click will try to make it as easy as possible going forward to convert from View to Sense, because that's what they want their customers to do. And I have to say, this converter is not bad. It, it doesn't actually create the full app for you, but it makes uh, master items out of uh, out of the items, uh, the charts and, and fields and things that you want. And you can choose them. Um, but then you can simply drag and drop to create your new app in, in Sense. It's not the end-all, be-all, but it's a nice start. So, um, so if you are considering, you know, going right from uh, right into Sense, uh, I would say, well, you, you may want to think about going to 12 first and then, uh, and then going to Sense after that. But the good news is that I think Click does understand that they need to make it as simple as possible to get to, to Sense. Okay, from a summary standpoint, so again, I think I've said this a number of times, but uh, the migration itself really should be fairly straightforward. If, if you plan and back up again, give yourself enough time, give yourself the, the backup, make sure that your preparation is good, and then you really shouldn't run into too many issues that are outside of your control. Um, a lot of time for testing and development. Uh, again, either you do it or have some, have some of your users do it before uh, making a switch in, uh, in production. This is just standard procedure, right? Um, make sure you review the release notes and installation guides. These, there's some good information in there. Um, and if you're in a specific situation, you know, using special functions or features, you really want to go through these things and make sure you're not going to be affected uh, by any migration that you do. Document your systems. Um, this is uh, something that I've seen a lot of people don't worry about doing, but it really can come in handy when you're in a, when you're in a pinch. And then, again, I would, up, I would recommend upgrading. From, if you're at, currently in 11, I would recommend going to 12 this year. Um, that'll buy you some time so that you can then plan a sense migration maybe for some time during 2018. Um, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to go from 11 to, right into ClickSense. 
Um, but I would, what I generally recommend, recommend to my customers now is, is get the 12, make sure you're, you're in support for the next couple years. Um, so that gives you the time to plan out and actually do a good uh, click sense uh, full migration. So Shima, that's the material I have to cover. I know I went a little bit over. I apologize for that. Oh, thanks for hanging in there with me. If anybody's still here and they have questions, um, Shima can take those now and I'll try to answer them. Great. Thank you, Phil. So I'd like to open up for a Q&A session. Um, while you're typing the questions in the Q&A panel, I will, um, I will go through the next one. So, so next webinar is Michael Wegman talking about introduction to ClickSense mashups. So please join us if you are interested in um, seeing how mashup works or how you can build mashups. And then other coming topics are what's new in ClickSense version June 2017. So today it's officially June, so uh, ClickSense will come up with a new version this month. That's how they announced it in uh, Connections. We will also have a pharma roundtable, so if some of you work for pharmaceutical companies, we can get together on the WebEx and discuss uh, certain topics. And then we also have a plan for what's new in end printing. Since ClickSense new version is coming out, we believe the new end printing is coming out also at the same time, so we will address that in that session. All the uh, sessions are recorded and posted on the Zone community portal. So if you go to the zone.infozoneus.com, you can click on the knowledge base, and if you click the video to filter, then you'll be able to see all the recordings that are available. So that being said, I will uh, open up for Q&A session, so I will read out the Q questions if, I, if you have. So please type into Q&A panel. Okay. So let's see. Okay, Phil, the first question. Are QVD files created in version 12 backward compatible? Yeah, so what's, what's interesting with QVDs is when Sense first came out, uh, they actually uh, wrote QVDs as the new columnar-based format, so they were not compatible within within ClickView. But since I think around Sense version or since version two, uh, they have all been row-based. So what's great is that your QVDs uh, can be created and used in any combination of ClickView 11, ClickView 12, or ClickSense. Um, so it really gives you a lot of flexibility with your QVD files. That's great news. Um, another question, are input fields supported in ClickSense? No, uh, that's one of the features that was taken away. Um, so you, you, if you're using input fields in view, you're going to have to find a, a, a different way to do that in Sense. Um, frankly, I don't know of a good workaround for that, but you'll just have to, to come up with a, a, a different method for, for allowing your users to update data. Okay. Can I upgrade and print into version 17 before upgrading to ClickView version 12? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, so you need to be um, at ClickView 11.2.0 SR15, I believe, in order to, uh, for, to have that work. But yes, you can do the, the end printing upgrade first. Okay, is there something to think about with the uh, I guess this is about end printing, perhaps. Will there be uh, existing reports work? Yeah, I, I see that question. So when upgrading from end printing 16 to 17, uh, as far as the created reports, um, what uh, what you'll find is that you're you know if you have like a report to find in in an Excel template or something like that that should be fairly good from 16 to 17 but you're going to have to redefine the actual report um, trigger or uh, the definition of that report in sense because there is no more designer uh, function or designer client in uh, in 17. You're going to have to use the web-based uh, um, control panel in 17, and so you'll have to redefine how you how you link to the document and, and use the report. But the report itself in Excel, you should should be able to utilize most of that 
um, without too much issue. The one issue I have seen in, in printing, and I'm not sure if this was even supported in 16, but in, at least in 17, it does not support container objects uh, in, in view. Um, so just be aware of that. How about the reports within ClickView? Will they work? Meaning that if, if in ClickView 11, you have the ClickView reports created, and when you upgrade to version 12, will they work? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that, that should be fine. Yeah, there, there is no, obviously, there's no reports in ClickSense because that changes over to stories, right? But, um, but yeah, between 11 and 12, your reports should be fine. Okay, great. Um, I don't have any more questions, but could you also uh, mention something about how we can help some of the customers, click your customers for the migration, Phil? Sure, yeah. I mean, if, if anybody's out there and, and they're looking for some help or just uh, some advice before they, they go into this, uh, you know, from like a one-on-one -on -one advice kind of thing, I mean, we are a consulting company and we, we do offer those services, so we can, we can certainly help you. Um, Shima, did you put the... Uh, the uh, um, contact information for InfoZone on there. If you send an email to info at infozoneus.com or send an email to me, uh, phil.bishop at infozoneus.com, uh, we can certainly help you out. Uh, you know, whatever your situation is, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can, uh, you know, give you a little uh, advice and, and some assistance if, if, you're trying, if you're planning to go through one of these migrations yourself. Okay, great. I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, officially, we would like to finish this webinar. So thank you very much for everybody to join our session. And thank you, Phil, for presenting uh, very informative information. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye.